So we're starting with a default scene. We have a camera over here. We can see it in the scene collection. If that's in your way, you can click the eyeball and it will disappear. It's not deleted. If you do want to delete it, you can click on it and push the letter X and then choose delete. I'm not going to, I'm going to push escape and then just hide it. This is the default cube, I'm not going to use it. I click on it left click and I can see it's highlighted because it's got an orange um, outline. Over here we'll see in the scene collection it's called cube. I don't need that so I can either hover over here and push X and choose delete or I can right click over here and choose delete, doesn't really matter. So pushing X, choosing delete. This uh, little widget here I can grab and drag around, but if I click on the X, it's going to change that to um, right orthographic view. That's what we're going to use. Now I can zoom in, I can zoom out, but that little circle, that white and red circle, is our 3D cursor. It hasn't been moved from the origin point. So we're going to keep that there. We want to do all of our work in orthographic. So right or left, left orthographic is fine, but if you're following along, make sure it's right. If you click that one more time, it goes to left. Click it again, goes back to right. We're going to add in a circle. We're going to go Shift A, and then we're going to choose Mesh. If you don't see this, then you're in some mode up here that's incorrect. So Shift A, Mesh, come down to Circle. This circle is lying flat, so if I was looking from up here from the sky, I'd be able to see the circle. Down in the bottom left, we have um, a whole lot of options. There's an arrow there pointing to the right. If I click it and turn it down, it gives me different options. I'm going to turn up the vertices to 36, and then I'm going to just change the radius. Um, if you're making a specific wheel for a specific car, then you'll have an exact radius that you want it to be. Um, in this case, I'm just showing how to change it. And then the alignment, rather than to world, I'm going to view, so it'll turn and face me. As soon as I go to edit anything on here, all of these options will disappear. You may also notice that the rotation has changed, so those are um, adjustments that will need to be applied. I zoomed in there by scrolling with my mouse wheel. As soon as, as I mentioned, I go to edit anything, watch this, edit, all the options will disappear. See you later. So I can now see a whole lot of little dots and lines. The little dots are called vertices. When I hover over on the top left here, you see vertex select. So that's an option. I can um, highlight one of those or two or three. My favorite way of, uh, of highlighting is push the letter C for circle. I can scroll down or up on my mouse wheel. Don't go too crazy. You make it too small, you won't see it. Too big, and it'll take up the entire screen, and you'll be, where's my circle? So I can do that with left mouse button, and I can circle select. With the middle mouse button, I can drop some of those. Um, and to get rid of that circle select, I either push escape or I right click. Personally, I prefer right click. I want to highlight all, I can push A. If I want to drop all, I double tap A. So that's one way to select. Another way is left click, draw a big rectangle. That can be a little bit um, uh, crude, especially if there's something in the middle you don't want to highlight. A few other things that you might do is you might um, click one and then hold down control and click and what it'll do is it'll highlight every vertice along that line. But what we're going to do is we're going to start with all. So I pushed A to highlight all. Now I'm going to push E for extrude. E, and that's made an exact copy of everything all connected. Now I'm going to push S for scale, and my mouse is out off to the right hand side here. So if I move that in towards the center, that's now made a lip for the edge of my wheel. And I'm going to left click, and it's going to drop. Now that line's disappeared. Everything there scaled in towards the origin of the circle. That's the orange dot in the center. I could change it rather than being the individual origin of the circle to being the 3D cursor, which in a lot of this will be more useful. Right now, since I've still got all of the circle, that original option works. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make only part of the wheel. So I'm going to make a six spoke wheel. So I'm going to come around here and delete. Um, I think I've got the right number there. Um, so that leaves me one, sorry, one, two, three sections. I'm going to get rid of all of those. And I'm going to push X and then choose v um, vertices. 
I'm just checking in here that I don't have any extra edges. Sometimes that can happen. Now I'm going to show you something slightly off. So the origin on this, if I go ES, it's gone into the middle there and that's not what I want. So I'm going to push escape and then command Z. So if I change the point that it scales to, to the um, 3D cursor and I can go ES, it's going to scale down towards where that 3D cursor is. So I'm going to click and do that and then go ES and again. So this is going to be um, a very basic wheel showing the concept of what we're trying to do. Now I'm changing to face select, you could push 3 on your keyboard, that's the row of numbers, one, zero, 1 to 9 and then 0 at the end, not the number pad. So I'm going to get that one and that one, and it's kind of stupid to do both sides, X for delete menu and then choose faces. Why would I bother doing that? It's much better, I'll delete one side, get rid of all of those faces and I'm going to use a modifier. So on the left hand side over here, there's a little blue icon that says modifier properties, looks a bit like a spanner. I'm gonna add a modifier. So I click add modifier, and the generate column, I'm gonna come down to the picture that looks like a butterfly, and it says mirror. And so that is mirrored in the X axis, which is all fine at the moment. There's a little bit more complication to it a little bit later, um, and I'll try to explain that a little closer to the time. So now if I'm trying to keep everything symmetrical I can click and delete that face and it's matched on the other side so I didn't have to do more than what was needed. Right so there have been some transforms applied to this it was rotated right at the very beginning so there's a menu hidden under a tiny little arrow here I tend not to use buttons but I push the letter N and out she pops. So this is a transform menu and we can look at um, certain things that have happened to the um, object. So we can look at its location, we can look at its rotation, we can also find further details under here in the box object properties. Um, so particularly under rotation that will cause problems. So I'm going to show those problems on purpose. We're going to essentially make six of these and spin them around. It needs to spin around an object in the middle, so I'm going to go shift A and this brings up the wrong list. The reason it's got the wrong list is because I'm in edit mode over here on the top left. So I'm going to push tab with my little finger and now in object mode, shift A. That's a much longer list. So I'm going to come down to empty and put in a plane axis. Now this plane axis is quite large. I'll leave it that size again otherwise it's going to cause the same problem I'm about to demonstrate. I'm going to rename that empty because I may have lots of empties and it would become confusing. So that one's going to be empty rotation point. And now I'm going to click on this circle and I'm going to show you another modifier. Now this can get really long, this list of uh, properties. So if I click that arrow, the modifier is still there. It just doesn't take up as much space. So I'm going to add a modifier, array. By default, it's added a second copy and it's offset in the X axis. We want it to offset around the array. So I'm going to untick relative offset and it disappeared. We're going to go object offset and I'm going to use this dropper or the pull down menu, whichever you like, it's up to you, dropper, and then hover over that and click it there. So then I can take this and then go R, X and rotate it and you're like, what's happening? It's not working. You'll see now from this angle, you'll actually see it's kind of rotated but it's off on a weird angle. That is because this object has um, some properties here applied about the rotation. So what we have to do first is apply these rotations. So we go object and then apply and rather than just going um, to rotation only sometimes it's just easy to go to all transforms and you'll see all of these choices down here, location, rotation, scale, and, and so on. So then I'll just push enter. But then you'll be like, what happened to my mirror? Well, let's go back and revisit the mirror. The mirror was in the X axis. So if we're gonna untick X and then tick Y, and you'll see it's now mirrored in this green axis, the Y axis. So that's now hopefully going to um, solve some of those issues. So if we come back to um, our array modifier. It is object offset around the empty 
and I can click the empty over here and then I can go R for rotate and because I'm in right orthographic it is going to rotate perfectly around the x-axis but if I want to constrain it I can push X and I can just spin it around like that I'm going to go command Z for undo because I want to see the rotation um, here exactly so I'm going to go R X and you'll hmm, it's not showing. there we go sorry on the that's over here on that side that's where it's showing R X now I've only got one section I need more so I'm going to push escape come back to this object and the array needs six pieces because I'm going to make six spokes so I've just put the count up to six go back to my um, empty rotation point R X to constrain it in the x-axis and that's now going to make six spokes the exact amount would be 60 and at the moment the rotation on the screen is 60.1 so rather than trying to move my mouse to the exact perfect position I'm just going to type 60 push return and it's the exact amount of rotation that I want so that's the idea of how do you make something symmetrical now back um, in to this object if I push E for edit Sorry, not edit, tab into edit mode I still only have one segment here that um, is doing all of the work some of the things that I may want to do is um, I may want to make wiggly looking um, uh, uh, spokes or put some extra detail into those spokes so I'm going to push 2 on the number pad double tap A and deselect I'm going to get 1 and I hold down shift 2, 3 I'm going to get all of these guys here then I'm going to move around slightly this way and I'm going to go E for extrude and that goes all over the place and X for the X axis and it's just going to move only in the X axis and then I'm going to click to drop that so essentially I've got this super simple shaped wheel um, there's a few other tools that I would like to show one is a loop cut for example control R I've just pushed control R and if I'm over this line essentially it wants to cut across there or it's asking me do I want to cut across there if I move it to here it'll ask do I want to cut up and down I want to put one here I'll click to confirm that's where I want it it's changed color these little arrows so I can move it up and down so I will put one there maybe I'll put one oops right uh, control R control R hey, it's moving it double tap control R where is it push the right key would be helpful just pushing function um, so those parts there I might use so I push three to get into face select circle and then I'm just painting those ones if I want to pull those forwards and go G for grab X for the x-axis to constrain it and it gives it a little bit more shape looking at up here perhaps I need um, another loop cut control R making sure I push the right buttons um, if I need to I can even scroll on the mouse wheel and put more or less cuts so I'll click there double click and it's confirmed that I've got those um, where I want them pushing three to go to face select and I might grab these two and again GX pulling forward and that's starting to give slight more complexity to the shape other things that we can do to make a wheel look a little bit more realistic is again in these modifiers I'm going to add in something that's going to make it rounder add modifier subdivision surface so what's happening is especially up in this corner it's pulling away part of the reason is here is where a vertice is and here's the next vertice so it's such a very long distance through the middle here so there's a couple of methods we can do that to make that not so wide and that's to put some vertices across here so if I go control R for loop cut click and then drag up you'll see that the curve changes depending where I put that loop cut similarly I might put another loop cut down here it still allows for a curve but it doesn't make it pull away quite as much we can see some problems here because it's not quite connected so under mirror and turn on clipping I also think there's another option somewhere else for being joined but we can merge those a little later partly it's um, the order of the modifiers but we'll apply those a little later 
So with a subdivision surface, we can increase it um, in the viewport many times, and you'll see it starts to look really, really round. Um, there's tons of other things that we might do. For example, um, if I put in um, Control R, pop in a couple there. Perhaps I want this face to be inset, so I might push um, I for inset. Put the mouse off to the side, I for inset, and then come in. And then I might push, I think it's B for border. Yep, and that stopped it coming off the edge. You'll see a slight change, and I'll click to confirm. I'm going to grab, G for grab, go into the e x-axis, and that's going to sync that part in. And so that might give me an extra little indent detail on part of my wheel rim. Um, bolts we'll have a look at a little later, but those are some general concepts that we um, are interested in. We can go along and apply all these modifiers. Um, I would suggest leave that sub, uh, look at the order of how they apply. Our major issue here is how these are pulling apart, and that's being caused by the subdivision surface. So we'll apply that last. Um, under edit mode, we'll change to object, and we can uh, where's the button now? apply. So now that entire thing is editable, um, and then this part also can be applied. Excuse me, went in the wrong mode. Um, has got to be applied in object mode, so some have to be in edit, some in object. Now some of these parts are touching but are not connected, so somewhere around here if I go G for grab you'll see it's not connected, so I want to connect those. I highlight all, push M, I'm going to merge by distance. Now have a look down the bottom of the screen, it's merged or removed 106 vertices. Now there is a distance part here, if I increase this, eventually it starts to really ruin my wheel. So we keep that very, very small, so that only vertices that are existing straight on top of each other are now joined. There's also some other cleanup options that could do the same thing. So they're all joined up, um, and we've got the subdivision surface. Now if we um, show that again on screen, there's no part that's pulling away from each other. So all of those little concepts um, be a very good idea to have a practice on. This is one of the reasons why I like circle select. So I can get that really easily. E, X. So that's one way to do it. I can go Command Z and I'll show you another method. Um, it might be um, if I hold down um, the right shortcut key in edge mode, it will highlight that whole edge loop. There we go. Option or Alt if you're on a PC. So I have to try the wrong one first. And that'll get the whole loop. So that's another way. E, X. And there's my little loop cut. Now if that's pulling away too much, you can again put loop cuts to tighten this in. Control R, pulling it forward. Control R and that one, pulling it to the edge, depending on how tight you want that to look. Now that just looks very plain and gray. Later on we can put in some shading. So in here, I'm going to click New. This brings up um, some nodes. The simplest way to make something look grey is come into this base colour and it's already slightly in the grey. The very important parts to change would be metallic to 100. Well, 1, because something's either metal or not, there's no in between. Roughness, if I turn that down it'll be nice and shiny and it'll start to look like chrome. So this is reflecting um, a sort of built-in picture which is kind of showing reflections on that little sphere there. So I hope that's enough to get you understanding the concepts, to have a bit of a practice. Um, more details to come. Thanks for watching.